The home of a now deceased pro-choice doctor in the United States has been found to contain the remains of over 2,000 fetuses. How was he allowed to accumulate so many dead fetuses and why was this allowed to happen? What was he going to do with them? That's what we'll be discussing today on the Hogcast. So this is the article itself, we'll go over that before we move on. Corpts find the remains of more than 2,000 fetuses at the home of a prolific abortion doctor just days after he died. Investigation, The investigation was launched at the property of the controversial medic. <laughs> um, it really bugs me right off the bat that they can use the term medic because a medic is meant to save lives not destroy lives which is exactly what this man has done he's destroyed over 2,000 lives before they even got a chance to draw their first breath the article itself out of the Daily Mail states the exact number of fetuses that were found at the man's house or the monster's house I should say 2,246 were found in his house. Now, he himself had died from medical complications, which is all the, it's always the way. You'll always find this happens in life. You'll find the bad people generally live a very long and, in, many, in most cases, happy life. And it's always the good that die young, the pure, the innocent that die young. It's always the way. The doctor himself, Dr. Ulrich Klopfer, he was the man in question, and that name in itself sounds like the type of name you would find on the roster of Auschwitz concentration, of death camp. It's exactly the type of name you would expect to find in one of these Nazi euthanasia centres. Dr. Klopfer was actually struck off from doing any abortions he'd been struck off since 2016 and the reasons given were for his quote-unquote failure to exercise reasonable patient care now that is an umbrella term that could mean so many different things it's that's just pure medical jargon god knows what he was doing what he was doing with all of these fetuses in the first place he had also violated multiple notice and document documentation requirements, especially uh, concerning those who were not yet adult. And in layman's terms, that means they weren't given the correct amount of notice. The state was not given the correct notice to be informed that an abortion had taken place especially on somebody who was not yet mature enough to in my opinion make the decisions themselves it was a number of days after dr klopfer died that his family members were going through the house and they found the medically preserved quote-unquote remains of the fetuses numbering as i said well over 2000 that particularly must have been a very horrifying sight for them unless that of course they were of the same persuasion as dr klopfer which i doubt they were because of course they notified the authorities that in itself speaks volumes we should show you that this man has gone far beyond anything that has anything to do with research. You don't keep that many medically preserved fetuses unless you have some sort of ulterior motive. And you can call them conspiracy theories. You can bring out all of the tinfoil hats you like. The fact of the matter is you do not randomly keep well in excess of 2,000 medically preserved fetuses in your home. If they were mummified fetuses, if they were just thrown away or whatnot, then I could take or possibly take the position that he'd done this for some sort of cheap thrill, some sort of perverted kick. But the fact that they were medically preserved and potentially viable for... To be used in stem stem cell treatments or, or anything like that that has to be considered 
Dr. Klopfer had his surgery in South Bend, Indiana, and before he was struck off in 2016, he was investigated multiple times in that year of 2016 and 2015, and the earliest I can find was 2014. Now, I've done a bit of sleuthing and I've discovered an excellent watchdog. It's a non-profit organisation and their aim is to track where the body parts or the matter of fetuses go. And this might answer why this monster was keeping so many innocent children who hadn't even been given a chance to breathe the first breath yet, refrigerated basically at his own home. The watchdog is called Children of God for Life and they track where, as I said before, they track where these fetuses or their parts or their constituent parts are going and what they are being used for. And the list is quite extensive, mostly of course medical, I'm sure that wouldn't surprise any of you, but also cosmetics and even certain dietary and food supplements. Now I will leave a link to that website and the watchdog in the description box, it will be at the top of the description box and I have just took a break from recording this video to email them to request a follow-up video with possibly an interview from them. Now the information I have got back is what you can see on your screen. This is a list of just some of the aborted fetal products which are well the the, the name it, it speaks for itself I probably don't have to, des to describe it to you. These are products in which the aborted remains of innocents who never had a chance at life are used for whatever reason and I'm going to look into it further now. I don't exactly know why these are being used yet, but I will do. Now, the list is quite extensive. I will leave a link, as I said, in the description box for you to go through it all yourself. I'll just go over some of them for you here, and we'll go through them together. Uh, it's important to note they have, and you've got to give this, I mean, I support them all the way, but you've got to give them one credit here for, for, their, dis, for their detractors, for anyone that are saying, for the pro for the pro-choice people, you have to give them credit here because they are they update them when these companies stop using fetal matter in products. They they will stop. They will they will update their website and any embargo they had with though that particular company, they will update it and they'll say this company or this particular product is now okay to use. The types of items that do continue to use fetal matter are, surprisingly enough, even Nestle products, but it's usually cosmetics or alternative lifestyle kind of choice-based products. However, what surprised me is that Pepsi, up until 2012, had used fetal matter in their products. I never knew that. I I still do drink Pepsi. I drink cola. I, I had no idea up until 2012 that they did that. And I suppose it wouldn't surprise anyone to find that the majority of the fetal matter is being used in vaccines and medications such as penicillin, Varivax, Proquad, the, the mumps vaccine. I personally am against the majority of vaccines. I do not like to be vaccinated. You're, you're going entirely on their trust. What is in what is in that injection you're getting you have to go on what they're saying here i've never had my tb injection that is something here in the united kingdom that they are very keen on you having i was the only one in my class in school that never had the tb vaccination and lo and behold i'm the only one out of all of the people in my class in school who thinks freely imagine that the final one I'm going to mention is probably the most, I wouldn't say controversial, but it, when I think about it in my head, it just makes my head spin a little bit. Because of course, regardless of what the New Age Marxist professors will tell you, the only people who can get pregnant and have 
children are women, despite what the new socialist sets say. Men cannot get pregnant and women cannot have penises. It's just a basic biological fact. However, I digress. Anti-aging skin creams, women. Anti-aging skin creams. It reminds me of that countess from Central Europe in the 1500s or earlier who bathed in the blood of virgins, basically. She had them murdered. These were poor serf girls, peasantry girls, who were employed by this countess to live up in her big uh, sprawling estate and she had her helpers and her goonies basically kill the girls and she would bathe in their blood that might seem a bit extreme in fact i probably am being a bit extreme with you here however you you surely must see a correlation between bathing in blood and smearing the remains of babies and innocence onto your face just to look younger and to wrap it up, we'll go back to Dr. Klopfer himself. And these people, he was, of course, from Illinois, a very democratic state. I don't know which way he voted, but I'm. if I had my last bottom dollar and I was to bet it on anything, I would bet it on him being a Democrat, a pro-choice, of course, Democrat. Now this is the one this is just one of the many inconsistencies and paradoxes and hypocritical illogical loops of nonsense that you deal with when you're dealing with people from the left or the left side of politics which have moved so far to the left that anyone to the right of Karl Marx is considered the very nazis that they are themselves Mr. Klopfer, him and his ilk and the Democrat Party in itself, they will often, and it's the same here in the United Kingdom we have with the Labour Party and the Greens and the Liberal Democrats, they're all the same, and it's the same in mainland Europe with their parties, the Socialists in Sweden and Germany and, and Denmark and Norway, it's always the same with these people. They will scream and holler about the welfare of uh, migrant anchor babies and alleged refugee children who are all six foot tall and all claim to be 15. They have tattoos on the neck of AK-47s and they, they speak nothing but hatred for others, but apparently they're 15. Of course, they say that just to beat the system. But these people, these doctors like Mr. Klopfer and... The people in the Democrat Party and the rest of them, they will wail about the rights of uh, migrant anchor babies, yet at the same time, they couldn't give two shits. I'm sorry for swearing, but it, it, it angers me when I think about this type of stuff. But they, couldn't, they couldn't give a damn, not even one shit, about the children who they didn't even get to breathe their first breath. The adults, and okay, I appreciate in some cases the minors themselves, they've made a choice to bring a new life into the world. And for whatever reason, they have regretted that. However, that that regret is not on the innocent child, the fetus who has not yet been born. That regret is not on the fetus, okay? It's not on the child. Don't put it on the child by terminating his life. Why do that? At least, I do. I would not like to see any child in the ad adoption system, the care system, but at least see the child through to birth and give the child away to a, maybe to a couple that can't have children. Do some good, something good, make something good come out of a bad situation. I'll leave it there. If you haven't yet, please subscribe like the video, let me know what you think of this in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.